In our last video, we talked about what sensors are and a couple types of sensors. Be sure to check that video out if you missed it. Of course, there are more sensors that we did not discuss, and a very popular class of sensor is the motion sensor. Today, we'll be talking about two very popular kinds of motion sensors, the accelerometer and the gyroscope. Accelerometers and gyroscopes are very closely related, but they are quite different. Because they are so closely related, many people may not know what the difference is between them. The differences can also be quite technical, so it may be a bit tricky to follow along with some of the resources that are out there due to all the technical lingo. We'll attempt to simplify the differences between them here. We will start off with the accelerometer. The name might be misleading because when most people hear acceleration, they think of an increase in speed. Instead, accelerometers measure what's called proper acceleration, which is the acceleration of an object relative to inertia or freefall. By definition, an accelerometer detects the acceleration of gravity in relation to an object. Everything described thus far might still sound way too technical and can sound confusing to most non-technical people. So to simplify everything said so far, an accelerometer measures change in linear velocity. Accelerometers can be one axis, two axis, or three axis, which basically just means they can detect positioning left or right, up or down, and forwards and backwards. Anti-theft measures are an example that can benefit from this because accelerometers can let you know when something that shouldn't be moving is being moved. Liftgate motion detectors, telematics, and insurance vehicle tracking are also examples of accelerometer uses. Accelerometers give precise info on linear movement of an object, but not so much on rotational movement. They can still detect parameters like the orientation of an object and which direction an object is facing, but the accuracy may not be totally correct and it's often delayed. And while accelerometers can be used to detect sudden vibrations or shocks, some data regarding lighter levels of shaking and jitters and vibrations can get filtered out. These slight delays and slight inaccuracies are important because these small errors add up as time goes on. Small errors will eventually become big errors if they are done continuously. And that is where a gyroscope comes in. For those who want technical definitions, a gyroscope measures the angular rate or the angular velocity around an axis, otherwise known as a measurement of speed and rotation. Or simply put, a gyroscope measures the rate of angular rotation of an object. Knowing the angular velocity of an object allows you to reliably and accurately measure aspects like the stability of an object, which direction it's facing, and how fast it's rotating. You can imagine how measuring this kind of data would be a big deal in certain applications, such as aircraft. Aircraft needs real-time data regarding the rotation, stability, and its angle in relation to the ground without any delay. It needs 100% precise information about the orientation at all times. Motion controls in gaming are also another example of a situation where the position of the object moves as well as the rotation. It's not enough to know just where the controller is, it also needs to know precisely where the controller is pointing and exactly how the controller is angled, even while your arm is moving at all times, with no delay. Long story short, if you need precise rotational info about an object in real time, you need a gyroscope. So in summary, the accelerometer can detect movement of an object, and the gyroscopes can sense rotation of an object. Now, depending on what your application is and what your need is, 
You can then start to ask more specific questions like, is this supposed to be moved? What direction does it need to be facing? How fast is it moving, etc. That will determine whether or not your application needs to have an accelerometer and a gyroscope. Some applications are just fine with an accelerometer by itself. They may not necessarily need to know the exact stability of an object in real time. And a standalone accelerometer might even be preferred in some instances, since the occasional jitters and light instability can get filtered out. On the other hand, many applications do require that exact input of knowing how fast an object is rotating or real-time orientation of an object. So it's extremely common for a design to have both an accelerometer and a gyroscope. Many older cell phones, for instance, only included an accelerometer at the time because that's all they really needed. But many modern day apps today need a gyroscope for positioning purposes, as well as popular features like image stabilization and taking panoramic photos. So almost all modern day photos tend to also include a gyroscope by default now. When you use three axis versions of both, you get something called the six degrees of freedom. This means that you'll get very high accuracy and positioning of an object in 3D space. Because many applications will require both an accelerometer and a gyroscope, there are sensors that combine both of these technologies into one. The InventSense ICM42688, for instance, has both a three-axis gyroscope and a three-axis accelerometer. The ICM42688 supports a highly accurate external clock input to help reduce sensitivity errors, increase accuracy from the gyroscope, and reduce ODR sensitivity to temperature. And that will conclude this discussion. Hopefully you are now a bit more clear about the technical differences between accelerometers and gyroscopes. But if you're not, our application engineers are standing by to offer you even more assistance, as well as support for your next IoT project. Simply contact Symmetry today for all your IoT design needs, including a huge variety of the latest and greatest sensors from the top suppliers.